Hi, I'm Charlie. This is a video game video video. I have hot breaking news. October 12th, 2021. G4, the gaming TV network that NBC Universal shut down in 2013, is coming back to cable. And I have an opinion on it. I also have a very weird relationship with G4. I would always watch it for like a half hour when I was at, at a house with cable. And then I would get disgusted and shut it off. Then I would think about it. Then I would think about it some more. Think about how I would do it better. And then eventually I'd use it as a background for a crappy cartoon I used to make. I love video games. That's why I'm making video game video videos. I love media. I love industry news. And yet this channel was so off the mark that I couldn't look away. I imagine this is what it's like when a music fan or a music enthusiast turns on MTV and sees... Six hours of teen mom and ridiculousness instead of anything about music. And what really stinks is that it took over a network that was pretty great called Tech TV. It wasn't just about video games, that was just a part of it. And it tried to make it the MTV of games. It tried a lot of things, it tried everything. Things filled with awkward jokes and hosts that were just looking for their next gig. The cheapest licensed product they could put on that had nothing to do with gaming. And I'm sure all cable TV is like this, but G4 just hit different. And it pissed me off to the very core of my being. So it's 2021, and if I was magically given control of the new G4 and a very small budget, which I'm sure they have, this is what I would do. And these are free ideas. Feel free to steal them and not credit me. Number one, make a show called 50 States of Games. You can go state by state. Just look for what the game scene is like, what the fighting tournament scene is like. Do they have cool conventions, that sort of thing. So episode would be Michigan, what local lands are happening. You're not going to hit them all. People from Michigan probably be mad. But you would be able to do a deep dive into what the state's about, what the regional scene is about, what games are popular, that sort of thing. Any big convention, all those pack shows, get an agreement, say we're going to make your official video, and just make it. Everybody gets promoted, some people get paid a little bit, everybody gets featured, people at the conventions be super pumped that there's like actual media there telling a story about it. Be a great thing to do and those conventions are always happening now that COVID has been solved. Number three, find any credible game site. Anything from Kotaku to GameIndustry.biz, give them as little money as possible and just say, give us a half hour of editorial. And you might not want them to do that because you'll want to get like advertising dollars from those people like that they might be uh, talking trash to, but just do it and make editorial their problem, not yours. Find three or four retro game collectors that aren't complete grifters and that have a decent screen presence or maybe someone new and just follow them as they make a game collection. Like, here's 10 episodes, he's starting from nothing, we gave him 100 bucks, he's going to buy and resell, build something out. Talk about what means something to him. This is being positioned as, like, an eSports thing, because I think Comcast owns, uh, like, an eSports team and the Philadelphia Flyers, and they're, like, all wrapping it in together. In addition to whatever you're doing with that, find a couple people who aren't signed and just follow them as they compete in local tournaments, do highlight reels, do whatever... Esports people trying to get signed do. Number six is do an actual news show. Get some people that like actually do gaming news. Jeff Grubb. Just see if he'll do a weekly show. See if they'll do a daily 10 minute show. It doesn't have to be from a studio, it can be from their house. Dressed up a little bit with some graphics, you're good to go. Make a retrospective on every single console, starting with the Magnavox Odyssey, going all the way to the PS5 and Xbox Series S. You don't have to be super huge dives if there's not a ton of material, but just say you got it covered and we're, we're building something new. And this will be our couple segment episode on the Magnavox Odyssey, the Atari Jaguar, why it did well, why it didn't do well. Since the old G4 loved gaming jokes and booth babes, make like a last comic standing or whatever the booth babe equivalent is for cosplay and just we're going to judge and someone's going to win and they'll win their own G4 show and we'll pay them 50 grand or something for to make us that show. I don't know why this never happened. I think I saw like some segments, but they never made a show. Just do Trading Spaces Gaming Edition. Two people 
they might know each other, they might not. They get each other's game rooms and they get a couple grand and try to hit the mark. Maybe they'll hit it, maybe they won't. Drama, call it Trading Spaces Gaming Edition. I'm sure TLC would uh, take some money for me to do that. Half hours do not work for this audience. That's as close as you can get to YouTube and some of these bigger things make them multiple segments. Sometimes you run them in a row, sometimes you don't. Have a playlist that shows up and maybe one day of the week you pick what plays. I don't know who would be interested in that because everybody's getting everything from the internet, but it would separate yourself. It would turn it into something where the viewers have some type of authorship. And it would just make it different than wanting to be MTV. And finally, overall, just make it authentic, unexpected, and relevant. As I mentioned before, the audience is getting their information from the internet, so you're never going to be first. You're never going to be best. But if you talk to actual gamers, and then you combine that with someone who can put a TV show together, which G4 stuff, it looked okay. Put those two things together. Don't let one overrule the other. And you've got a shot at making something really special. Just like GameStop, they're on the same journey, and they both have a tremendous opportunity to make the gaming platform, to make the gaming retailer. They definitely should not work together, but there's an opportunity for both of them to take gaming to the next level instead of just strip mining it because venture capital is available. So that is my speech. Thank you for listening, watching, loving. Um, I'm trying to do these weekly. If you give me a comment, I may respond to it. I'm trying to do more eye contact because Ryan said work on my eye contact. And I think someone went randomly woo. So woo back to you. Thank you.